Coming up on today's Philadelphia Eagles, now my guide and my scouting report for how the Eagles could beat the Buccaneers in the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. First, today's show is sponsored by True Classic. You can get up to 25% off right now. We're going to tell you more about True Classic coming up here in just a little while. I'm rocking one of their polos right now, and you've seen me wear a lot of their products. Golf polos, athletic material, t-shirts, some of their shorts, really, really comfortable. I'm wearing their boxer briefs right now. Get signed up, trueclassic.com slash chat sports, 25% off. Start the new year off right by looking swaggy. So the stage is set. Philadelphia Eagles on the road against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Monday night football and the final playoff game of Wild Card Weekend. Kickoff is set for 8.15 p.m. Eastern at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. And the line has not changed throughout the week. It has remained steady with the Eagles being three-point road favorites. The over-under has gone down a little bit from earlier this week because there ex is expected to be rain in the forecast. It is dead even at 43. And you think back to week three. Eagles got off to a good start. Road win against the New England Patriots. Good week two win against the Minnesota Vikings. Then they go on the road Monday night football, just like this matchup, to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. And the Eagles really dominated that football game. But so much has changed since then. Eagles won by 14 points, believe it or not. That was the largest margin of victory for the Eagles this year. And I went back and I watched the tape this week. And I went back and I watched some of the highlights for this game. Defensively, different scheme, different personnel, higher energy levels. And offensively, I really like what the Eagles were able to do in that game as far as their game plan. And we talk about how so much has changed since week three. Eagles got off to that 10-1 start. Buccaneers started slow. Since then, though, the Eagles have plummeted, and the Buccaneers have risen up to win the NFC South. Now, the NFC South, arguably the worst division in football, but the Buccaneers did earn the NFC South crown, whereas the Eagles squandered their opportunity to maybe get the number one seed, the number two seed, the number three seed, and win this division to become the first repeat winner of the NFC East since 2004. Whereas Philadelphia choked down the stretch going 1-5, the Bucs went 5-1 to finish 2023. And something that I'd like to see again in this game that we saw a lot in Week 3, the Philadelphia Eagles relying on their offensive line and their strength in running the football. The Eagles, despite Tampa Bay being a very good rushing defense, ran the ball 40 times for 201 yards. That was good for five yards per carry. And I think that the Eagles need to get back to their identity, which they had last year, which they've been missing this year, and they've gone away from it. The Eagles need to tap in to the mentality of this city, and they need to play some bully ball. And what's odd is that these numbers that we're about to show you are misleading. The Eagles rushing attack this year. Their rush play percentage, almost 46%, seventh highest in the NFL. Their yards per rush, 11th in the NFL at 4.3. Their rushes per game, they run at 30 times a game. That's sixth in the NFL, but some of those come in bulk with Jalen Hurts. Rushing yards per game, Eagles are eighth at 128.8 and rushing touchdowns per game, that's also skewed. They're fifth in the NFL thanks to the brotherly shove. Yet you don't feel like, when you've watched this team over the last month and a half, that they run it enough. Because DeAndre Swift, who is the most gifted running back this organization has had since LaShawn McCoy, with the quickness in and out of his cuts, ability to make guys miss, and him being a home run threat, this year has more than 20 carries just once. And a couple of weeks ago when he had 28 carries, I love the identity and the look and the feel of this Eagles offense. And I want to see them attack Tampa Bay, run right at them, especially with Jalen Hurts not throwing at all this week because of the dislocated middle finger on his throwing hand, and there could be some rain in the forecast on Monday night. Allow your offensive line to set the tone and dictate the pace of the game. 
Brian Johnson, Nick Sirianni, I'm talking to you. So with that, let's talk some ball down in the comments section. What is your biggest key to the Philadelphia Eagles beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the wild card round of the NFL playoffs? Let me know and share your ball knowledge with us in the comment section right now. As I mentioned off the rip, Eagles Now is sponsored by True Classic. Get started on the right foot with your style with True Classic and save up to 25% off right now. I'm wearing one of their polos and I love their products. Our favorite sponsor, True Classic, here to help you end the old year with a new you in clothes that'll give you confidence to tackle all of those 2024 goals and resolutions. Out with the old ratty t-shirts and sweat stains and holes. Yes. Eagles now, family, I'm talking to you. True Classics outerwear, ultra comfortable, perfect fitting essentials range from fitted t-shirts, athleisure, jeans, sweaters, boxer briefs, shorts, and a whole lot more. True Classic has everything that you need to hit the gym, to take it slow, or to treat yourself to something nice, or to spit game with the ladies or the men if you go out on a date. They've already helped over 2 million men look great in their apparel, and now you can save big while you do so. For a limited time, only get 25% off when you shop now with our exclusive link, trueclassic.com slash chat sports. The hoodies, very comfortable. The joggers, high quality and awesome. And you can pair everything with their ultra soft, super stretchy material that is comfortable, long-lasting, comfortable, and you know my motto. Look good, feel good, just like the Eagles do in their fresh uniform combination. So get up to 25% off right now. Start the new year off looking right, but also saving money with True Classic. Continue to move forward on today's show. You know that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with their defensive style, Todd Bowles, very aggressive defensive mind, are going to bring the house. And Jalen Hurts has to do a better job of identifying the blitz reading the blitz at the line of scrimmage, checking it down, making the necessary audibles at the line, and if he doesn't, Eagles could have a long night in the passing game. Hurts has really struggled against the blitz this year. He's only completed 60.5% of his throws for a little more than 1,300 yards. He's thrown six touchdowns, eight picks, could be worse, three dropped interceptions during that span, and a rating which ranks 28th among quarterbacks in the NFL of 74.1. And why do I say that the Buccaneers are going to blitz a lot? Because that's what they do. They have the third highest blitz rate in the NFL. Philadelphia, also with this defense, has to be able to get off the field on third downs. This has been a problematic trend all throughout the year, and maybe this is just who Philadelphia is. The Eagles have allowed a conversion rate of 46% on 3rd and 10 plus. We're not even talking 3rd and short. We're talking 3rd and 10 plus the last month. That is the worst mark in the NFL. Again, 46% when the league average is at 19%. So when I've said over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks, that this is a historically bad defense, those numbers back that up. And when you give up 3rd downs against the opposition, it's a recipe for a long night, especially with an Eagles defense that's looked tired. It's looked slow. Matt Patricia, Nick Sirianni even said this week, we got to get past how we've played over the last couple of weeks, and we got to get back to playing fast and aggressive and not thinking as much. But when you're on the field consistently, especially when your offense is really struggling and you give up a lot of third downs, it keeps your defense on the field. So that affects your stamina, and it tires you out. And then you're not able to get any stops because you can't generate pressure on the quarterback. And then on the back end, you're just a leaky valve. For this Eagles offense, it is going to be so important to turn red zone trips into touchdowns. And Philadelphia, in turn, has to stop the Buccaneers in the red zone. The Eagles defense, 30th in red zone defense. The Buccaneers defense. Third in red zone defense. And what's been a part of the Eagles' struggles of late? They'll move the ball, but when they're in plus territory, penalties back them up. Communication causes a penalty to back them up. 
or they turn the football over. Or when they get in the red zone, they're settling for three. They're not settling for seven. And that can be the difference in a close playoff game like this one could be, with the Eagles only being three-point favorites. So the Buccaneers give up a lot of yards, but then they buckle down inside the 20. And this Eagles team, because the defense has been so bad, when they get in the red area, if they can put seven points on the scoreboard consistently, they can win this game going away. Lastly, five more points on how to beat the Buccaneers. You avoid those aforementioned penalties and turnovers, which ruin your momentum and ruin the flow of your game. You got to be able to stop Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Both sneakily this year went over 1,000 yards. And this Eagles secondary, they haven't been able to cover anybody. Good news is Darius Slay is back. And Baker Mayfield is really, really banged up with an ankle injury that's hobbled him, as well as a rib injury, right? I think it's a rib injury as well for Baker Mayfield. So over the last couple of weeks, that Buccaneers offense has not been good because Mayfield has been banged up. And the big play has been alive and well for this Buccaneers offense. You can't let Mike Evans and Chris Godwin get behind you, and you're going to be without Sidney Brown. You're going to be a little bit light at that safety spot. Reed Blankenship has been injured all throughout this week. Kevin Byard, a little bit older. And the communication, I want to get to that next, has been so bad on the back end. And one of the reasons why I love Jesse Minner, the Michigan defensive coordinator, he runs a complex pro-style scheme, which is really all the craze at the NFL level right now. Mike McDonald used to be Michigan's defensive coordinator. He's now the Ravens' defensive coordinator. He's running the same scheme. Ravens have the number one defense in the NFL. Uh, Jesse Minner is running the same scheme. And what did Michigan do in the national title game that I was at, got to see up close and personal in Houston? The Washington offense, which has three wide receivers who could go in the first two or three rounds, and Michael Penix Jr., who could go in the first round, they scored 13 points per game, and they were averaging nearly 40 points per. And what really stood out to me was the communication of the defense audibly, making those hand signals to set up their coverage, but also how some of the defensive backs were able to pass on receivers to the next level of the defense. Eagles try to do that, and they just have guys running free. It's awful. So that's the defensive communication that I'm talking about. And then the offensive communication. This Eagles offensive line has a lot of talent. They haven't played up to their level. Sirion even said that this week. Part of that is the bad communication. And it's the offensive line. It's Jalen Hurts. They've just been out of sync. And against this Buccaneers team with a couple of good pass rushers, good defensive linemen, good linebacking core, they can take advantage of that. And then as far as the communication goes as well, getting play calls in on time and the right personnel groupings on the field so you don't have to burn timeouts like the Eagles had to do in that second half trying to come back against Arizona. To make Jalen Hurts' job and life a little bit easier and to negate the blitz, how about some screen passes to DeAndre Swift? You let the rushers get upfield, you dump it off to DeAndre Swift, who's so dynamic with the ball in his hand. Or Dallas got her into the flat. Dallas got her on a bubble screen. And I'm not talking where you have to throw a bubble screen all the way to the perimeter. Because the Eagles do that a little bit too much. I'm talking, let the rushers get upfield, dump it off. Let the rushers get upfield, dump it over their top to Dallas Goddard. I just want to see more of that, especially with Hurts being banged up and that rain. And then the Eagles have to be better against the run. The Buccaneers are awful running the football. So if the Eagles can't stop the Buccaneers rushing offense, it's going to be a long day because that sets up the play action for Baker Mayfield. So with that, that's my guide for how the Eagles can beat the Buccaneers. I want you to predict the score. I've been so down on this team, and after the Sunday watch party during our post-game show, I had said, look, I don't even know if the Eagles can beat the Bucks." <sighs> I'm going to remain faithful to this ball club. 27-24, my final score.